Good point. So let's start right there at the wide receiver position. Look at the top five prospects. According to CBSSports.com, DK Metcalf out of Ole Miss headlining a pretty deep class of playmakers here. Metcalf started the first seven games for suffering a season-ending neck injury, but he stole the show at the Combine with both his size and speed. Guys, you believe the hype surrounding Metcalf, and do you think he could be a number one wide receiver in the NFL? DeKalen Zacharias, boys, six foot three, 228 pounds. He's a big-bodied, explosive receiver. Watch that with the concentration with the one-handed grab there. That's really what he does. He big backs guys. He bullies them. He's a big physical presence. Takes him a while to get going, but once he hits that final gear, there's nobody that's going to be able to catch him. He's still got some stuff to prove, but if he does, it's a great place to start because he brings some intangibles that not many receivers in the history of this game have ever had. Well, he's big, he's fast, he's strong. If you're a defensive back, if you're a cornerback, or if he's in a slot and you're challenged by him, man, you better get up in his grill. You better challenge him in those first couple of yards because it won't take him long to hit that big, long stride and be gone. He's got the potential which means he potentially can be really good or he can potentially not be really good. One thing in his favor is bloodlines, guys. Terrence Metcalf, his father, mm. played a lot of football. How about his grandfather? Terry Metcalf played a lot of football. And again, you go back to that size that we're talking about. Love this body to be able to shield off defenders. And then he also has the speed that we talked about for a big man. So we're talking about six foot three, six four ish, 220 that can move and create separation. Ball skills incredible. And you see the numbers from last year for DK Metcalf. Obviously, injuries have been an issue throughout his career, not just last season, which obviously was cut short by an injury. Now to his teammate, A.J. Brown. First team All-SEC last year while setting single season receiving records for Ole Miss in both yards and receptions. A lot to like about A.J. Brown. To me, this guy is a slot bully. He's got the quickness of a point guard, but the athleticism and body style of a power forward. He likes to be able to play physical. Kind of reminds me of Juju Smith-Schuster. Still needs to develop a little bit, but there's a lot to like about Mr. Brown here. Looks good in a uniform. I love this, guys. When he catches the football, turns into a running back. Real physical. You better wrap this guy up because he will break an arm tackle. He'll stiff arm you, and he can make the 50-50 catch. When he's in a crowd, he'll go get it. And he can run with it after that catch. And my favorite thing about this guy, doesn't matter if it's a short pass, medium pass, long pass. If you're a defensive back and you're trying to figure out, okay, when's that ball coming? I'm not looking at the quarterback. I'm going to watch his hands. His hands are so fast from waist to air and when he catches it he's a snatch guy he goes after it and just plucks it out of the air now to Oklahoma's Marquise Brown aka Hollywood the speedster was first team All-American but a foot injury kept him from working out at the combine and Oklahoma's pro day he does have good genes though his cousin is Antonio Brown could he have a similar impact on the field, Coach? I think so, because what are we talking here with Hollywood Brown? We're talking speed. And, guys, the one thing that you've always seen him every Saturday, you've seen this guy get behind defenders. The post, the post corner, the takeoff, and then also the quick screens, the reverses, get the ball to him. Yeah, and he had that Liz Frank injury at Liz Frank's surgery, so that's got to give you a little bit of hesitation as to how, how he's going to come back and how long that will take. But, I mean, you can't coach that speed. And it's not normal speed. And we're talking 4-3 speed. That's the kind of speed he brings. And he can accelerate past people. You think he's going fast, then he hits you with that little fifth gear on the outside. This is the best burner in the draft. He's got yeah. the most speed by far. And Randy talked about it. If you have speed, you have it. Well, this young man has it in spades. He's a home run hitter. He can do this. He can catch underneath and take it to the house and take – a little pass and turn it into a big game, or he can lift the top off the defense. This is a player that requires safety help over the top. Nobody wants to be able to deal with him one on one. He's a slightly undersized wide receiver, so some of the bigger, more physical corners will be able to man him up at the line of scrimmage. So he's going to have to learn to defeat jams, but you can move him. You can line him up in the slot. You can do a lot of things to eliminate that to maximize his greatest skill, which is his speed, which he's by far the best in this draft when it comes to that. All right, up next, Arizona State's. Nikhil Harry, a three-year starter of the Sun Devils. He had an impressive combine showing, but what do you make of this physical receiver at the next level, Randy? Not a quick, sudden receiver. He will battle you for the ball. If it's a 50-50 catch, 
It's a 75-25 catch. He's going to come down with it. His problem is going to be separation, and separation is the difference between college and pros. I agree with Randy wholeheartedly. It's not a 75-25. It's a 90-10. <laughs> that ball goes up in the air. He goes and gets it, man. Whether it's the back shoulder, he's going to be the player on the field who can go up and high point that ball. He plays with the swagger. He's almost got a defensive player's mentality when you watch him play. He wants the ball. He wants to punish. He's not going to separate. He's not uber quick. But if you need that tough, hard catch that's contested in a small window, Nikhil Harry's your dude. That's him. A physical, physical receiver, a guy you can count on. We'll catch it in the crowd. Maybe not have the separation, but when the ball's coming to this guy, boy, you feel good about him catching the ball, putting it away. Physical, tough, competitor. And even, you know, when he's going across the middle, guys, a lot of times there's some receivers that have alligator arms, get a little uh, look around. He concentrates <laughs> and focuses on the ball. All right, good stuff, guys. So which wide receiver will hear his name called first? on draft night and how many could go on day one for those answers let's check in with our NFL insider Jason Lockenfora. No position group in this draft is more puzzling to evaluators than wide receiver. I can't get two guys in the same organization to tell me who they love the most much less guys in other organizations to agree on a consensus that yeah this is the number one wide receiver. They like a lot of these guys but where they fall is one of the big mysteries. DK Metcalf Got all the press coming out of the combine, and rightfully so. But when teams go back to his tape, they still see some holes there. They still worry about some things laterally. Can he do this? Is he a natural catcher of the ball? All things being said, I think he goes in the first round. But I'm not sure he's the first wide receiver off the board. If you made me pick today, I would say Marquise Hollywood Brown out of Oklahoma. People see a lot of Deshaun Jackson in him. I think he will be the first wide receiver taken. Yes, he's coming off an injury, but there's so much dynamic stuff to him. He's so twitchy. He's so fast. I believe he will be the first wide receiver taken. And the other guy I hear the most about as we get closer to the draft is Hakeem Butler out of Iowa State. Don't be shocked if he sneaks into the first round as well. Jason, thanks. So look at how many wide receivers have been taken in the first round the last five years. Slight decline over the last three NFL drafts. Last year, only two went on day one. And as Jason said, it looks like at least two will be first rounders this year, if you had the pick, Houston, Ooh. who would be your top receiver in this draft? My top pick. It's really between, for me, it's between DK Metcalf and A.J. Brown. I'm going to go with A.J. Brown. First and is pick. that because of the health? Because of the they, health. Okay. How and he you? likes that big body there. I'm going the opposite way. I'm going to go a small body, but a jitterbug, somebody with some speeds, and Marquise Brown. I think what he brings to the table from a skill set, you have to assume he's healthy. You see Deshaun Jackson, you see Tyreek Hill, you see somebody that can break open a ball game. He's number one. Yeah, the crazy thing about him, though, Aaron, is you know your points are absolutely right, but you figure him in an NFL-style offense with some of these creative coaches and him coming out of the slot, you know, how much speed he could build up by the time he gets five, six yards down the field. You know, you're not going to press a guy that's in motion. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun to watch. I think he's going to have the biggest year. Yeah, Tyreek Hill. That's a good comparison right there.